Only thing hot around here these days is what's hot. This is where we talk about the stories that have everybody talking. We're joined today by Tracy Johnson with Tempo Milwaukee. Jeff Wagner back with us also. We are talking about a controversial story today out of Texas. After a two-month legal battle, a brain-dead and pregnant woman was removed from life support. State law required the hospital to keep the woman ventilated to preserve the fetus. The family fought to have her taken off those machines, and they finally won. A horrible situation for any family to be in. But what do you think about the state law and the family's fight? I mean, you know, they, they yeah. ask, everybody's supposed to have their final wishes intact, mm -hmm. but yet in this case, state law trumps that. Right, and, and, and see, and to me, that's one of the key things. This woman was very, very clear on the fact that she did not want to be kept alive by artificial means. So this wasn't one where you're trying to guess at what um, you know her wishes might have been. She was very clear on this, and, and I mean, I honestly, especially given the fact that the fetus wasn't viable, then it determined, I think they ultimately determined that the baby probably wasn't going to live regardless. Th this is a difficult situation. I think it was the right thing to do. Well, and I'm surprised that in, in a state like Texas, where they have such a strong uh, pro-life uh, mentality, that they would let something like this go through. Um, you know, and I, I sit here, I was discussing this with my husband. I can barely think this through in terms mm -hmm. of thinking about was this fetus viable, was it not viable, and the wishes of the family. It's hard to sort through the details. And, and from what I understand, it was the lawyers who were saying that it was conclusive, but not the hospital in terms of the fetus's viability. Right. And then, of course, I mean, you, you, what was weird about this as well is you would think that the the woman's parents and the, the husband, you know, the, the father of the child, normally they're going to be on the other side. They're going to be the ones pushing to say, no, we want to make sure she's kept on the ventilator so you can deliver the baby. Apparently there were significant concerns about the, the fetus, especially given what had happened to the mom. Horrible situation, but I, I think when the woman expresses her wishes as clearly as this woman did, I, I just don't think the state should say you're able to keep her artificially alive, essentially against her will. Do well, lawmakers get into trouble, you think, when they start making up rules that trump people's individual choices? Yes. Well, but, yes. but, but, but here's a situation where you're, you're talking about a fetus, and in a state like Texas, which is very, very clear about pro-life, um, laws and a mentality. Um, I, I think that's where you're really getting into trouble. This is this fetus can't make the decision, and so these laws are are, are trumping the decision of the individuals and of the the the, the, right. the brain dead mother. Well, well right. I mean, because what, what the law essentially says is the the right of the unborn child. That the fetus, whether it's viable or not, trumps the right and the wishes of the mother um, in a very, you know, difficult situation. This, I, I think, this is an interesting thing. This is, I think, an aberration, but I think it's certainly something that maybe they should take another yeah, look at the maybe, law. But maybe now from here on out, your wishes have to include if I'm pregnant yeah. or, or, or something. I mean, I don't, yeah. I don't know. All right. Come. Still no big warm-up, but when that comes, we'll be dancing in the streets. I would love to see <laughs> the variety of pajamas that show up here in the workplace. There would have to be restrictions. Charles, Footies. Charles Footies. Benson in his smoking jacket. <laughs> I'm too tall for footed pajamas. You they don't make them in my size. Now more of what's hot and our viewers' choice topic of the day. Tracy Johnson, <laughs> Jeff Wagner are here. I bet Wagner has the red flannel ones with the flap in the back. Right? <laughs> I was just going to say that. <laughs> A snuggie, perhaps. <laughs> All right. Viewers' choice topic. Will an increase in the price of stamps hurt mail usage? Stamps for first class mail now cost 46 cents. That's a hike of three cents, the largest increase in consumer postage prices in more than a decade. I apologize, Mr. Wagner. No, hey, if they're warm, I don't care. <laughs> it's, it's, I'm, I'm telling you, you know, style goes out the way here. I bet you you're like more. me. You're a sweatpants guy. Uh, what, if, if it's a Jimmy Buffett thing, that's what I, right. I'm doing there. Um, I don't want to know. Okay. <laughs> Postage stamps. Okay, postage Here we go. stamps. All right, this is here's what's so bizarre about this thing. Typically, when people aren't buying products, what do they normally do? You decrease the cost of mm -hmm. the product, so they might be more inclined to do it. Here, people aren't using stamps, so they're going to increase the cost. This is completely and totally uh, counterintuitive. The um, the post office is in a mess, and this is not going to help them solve their problem. Well, and what you're pointing to is is exactly right. The the business model is broken. Are three cents here, four cents here going to help or hurt anyone? I mean, when you said 46 cents is the new rate, I, 
49. I, 49. I, I didn't. I didn't even know. I buy the forever stamps. I don't know. I send a lot of mail, but the the truth is, we are going to the digital digital way anyway. I mean, I don't think it matters three cents, four cents, five cents. Uh, and I don't think dro way. you know dropping prices won't bring people back because no. for those who pay their bills online, right. they're not going to be like, oh, it's three cents cheaper for a stamp. I'm going to go back to that. But then you have some other people who don't have access to technology, right. and that's right. the way they pay their bills. They have to pay the price. Yeah, I mean, the, the problems are so much more fundamental, and you know. But unfortunately, the post office can't operate like a business because Congress has a say in it. They need to be closing underperforming post offices. They need to do away with Saturday mail delivery. That'll save billions of dollars. I love getting mail on Saturday but it just doesn't make economic sense. Otherwise, it's just not going to be viable. And you can't keep increasing costs on products that people aren't buying now. And All it's right, still a great deal. All right, one topic to go here. Lightning round. Yeah. The music industry celebrated in Los Angeles last night with the 56th Annual Grammy Awards. Favorite moments from the evening? I didn't watch. I'm sorry. Oh, oh well, you, okay. I didn't either. I watched the, the, the recap, kind of the I, review. I think you got it. I think you got it with the recap moments. I mean, That's a couple a of weird. people said this. The there were a couple hug. collaborations. Yeah. Right. The, the people Daft dressed Punk? as robots. Do you think Daft Punk is weird? <laughs> yeah, Madonna that weird. wearing a grill. Okay, mm. but good parts. Beyonce at the beginning, that worked for me. Paul and Ringo <laughs> coming back. Yeah. And we don't have a picture of it because it wasn't right at the Grammys. But I didn't know who Joanna Krupa was until I saw her dress at the pre-Grammy party. Trust me, Steve, check this bad boy out. She I go, am, I am she goes to me. Is, she is she replacing Pippa? Well, no. um, <laughs> I, I'd really like to see Pippa in the dress that she wore to I the pre-game Grammy party. Now I got to Google it. I, yeah. I'm, I'm a big fan of the collaborations when they put Stevie Wonder and Daft Punk or whoever. I, I'm a big fan of yeah, that. Like the that. new and the old, and I love that Led Zeppelin won an award. I mean, I don't usually say this. I felt old because I didn't know. Do you think a lot of the younger crowd is going Led Who? Yeah. A Led Who? <laughs> My only complaint is where was Jimmy Buffett? Uh, and right, Jeff. See, number one and number two. What was up with Katy Perry and that horse? That's, That's the nice other dress. thing. Right? That's not a dress. It's an it's an anti dress. Yeah, you see, I tr I tried to get a picture, but we couldn't figure out legally how to do that. I <laughs> Check it out. I don't see that working on television. That's Joanna a lot Krupa. of tape. That's a lot of tape. <laughs> the what's hot discussion will continue online. That's Find hot. it at tmj4.com/hot and don't go googling anything else. Brian, come on over here.